special podcast session. Welcome to all the new listeners and all of my own ones, day ones. Welcome back. You are listening to On One Radio, the talk show podcast station. And this evening, we have open discussion. And we have our guest, culture and society YouTuber Richard Ogbu, is going to be tackling our topic with us for this evening. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Um, Our topic is how many bodies are too many or not enough? And does it really matter? So this is like an age-old topic right here. With, um, With the recent year's changes added to it. That sounds about right, right? So, I mean, we all know sex and sexuality are a part of life. And that's aside from reproduction. Sex can be about intimacy and pleasure. Everybody gets something from it. And in a lot of ways, keep something from each partner. So, I think it's a really good topic on those grounds. What do you think? Right. You're right about that. Everybody has their, their varied opinions on that. And it's almost a guarantee that you can have four people in a room. And unless those four people have been best friends for 20 years consistently, right. it's, it's almost a guarantee that, that no four people will agree on this topic then. That is true. Well, that's true because, you know, everybody's got their own perception of things and how one person view it. Somebody else may not, you know, view it that way or, dare we say, not have enough experience to Uh really even have an opinion on it. But, I mean, so, I guess, really, let's answer that question from our points of views. How many bodies are too many or not enough? So, oh, this is a doozy. And for for all y'all listening, I'm not judging y'all, so so don't judge. But I'm going to say this. Sex is a good thing when you do it right. So if you're within your comfort zone, the number of the partners is really up to you. Because I'm going to say I'm comfortable in mine and what I choose to do, I'm going to do. Whether it's have one partner, two partners, or maybe even three at the same time or different times. It just all depends on what you want and what you can handle, right? So in that aspect, I'll say... It does matter, but it doesn't matter. And I say that because too much of a of a good thing can be bad. So that's... I agree with that. Yeah. Um, let me go a little bit deeper on that. Go for it. Okay, so on this subject, how many bodies is too many bodies? Um, that's something that with some people, that answer will vary by age. Now, 
going out. Right. Let me say this for, for the listeners. I'm 50 years old. I'm 50 years old, and my thought process on this when I was 20 is probably different from what it is now. Right, of course. Well, what I'm going to say, of course, because some people may be, you know, hardline in, in their thinking on this subject. I'm That's not true. Wondering. I've always been a person that if if you're with me and we're exclusive, do what you do because you're with me. I don't care about your past. Right. As long as while we're together, you don't give me no diseases, you don't cheat on me, I'm not I'm not gonna cheat on you. Right. We're gonna do whatever we wanna do. Do it together, do it happily. Right. That's the point right there. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean and, about doing it right. Right. And I'm going to take it a step further. Um, there are some people, how can I put this well, in the culture that my father's side of my family is from, mm -hmm. they are Nigerian on, on my father's side. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised here in the state. That, that is why you're about to hear an accent like this. <laughs> anyway, um, I digress. <laughs> Some people like to spot the whole sex before marriage thing. Right. Personally, I disagree with that because I've been around a block a few times. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, I spent three of my teenage years in Nigeria. Right. And let's just say I was having sex like I was a porn star. Well, all right then. Maybe part of that was because... In my father's village in, in our hometown, my father was a literal celebrity, and my father's literally the greatest thing to, to actually come out of that little village. Right. Oh, so you had status with the penis. That's what that was. Um, yeah, I did. What? I had status as a kid coming from America, and the son of an ambassador, so yeah, I had, I had big status. Yeah. Well, yeah. Status regard, regardless. Right. Um, got the panties, and I was all, I was always the person who was fully aware of consequences, and I am to this day. Whether the consequences are maybe her getting pregnant, mm -hmm. maybe her not being honest about maybe having a disease, which thankfully it never happened. Right. Exactly. Or, Yes, there, there's and always consequences. Back to, back to the number thing. Uh, I can say I've, I've been with a very small number of virgins in my life, and if it was up to me, I would have had zero. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's and true. The thing is, some women are women are willing, some women are not. That is true. You're, and you're right. Unfortunately, in this world, you know, sometimes people hook up just to hook up. One night stands. Literally, yeah, one night stands. I mean, I was I was a bouncer in nightclubs here in Dallas for many years, and even before I moved to Dallas, I was a bouncer too. Yes. Yes, it is. I, I've I've had the liberty of seeing it happen as well, so I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and mean... Regarding virgins, like I said, you got to teach. Yeah. And the older you get, a virgin to me almost seems like a waste of time. Because I want somebody who, well, can match my freakiness. I want someone who can match my sex drive. And... Right. I can see that experiences versus inexperience. Uh -huh. But see, that's another reason why I want to do this topic too, because that really does matter in in the whole situation. Because, like you say, you don't want to spend all that time 
with a virgin trying to teach her what it is you like or even how to do any of those things. So there's that slight clash right there. You just want kind of what you want and not have to go through all those right. hoops and whatnot. And, um, let me say this too about, about a virgin. Also, if, if you're dating a virgin, you know, and you're their you stuck. Uh, you stuck. That, that, you're going to be stuck in that person's head for the rest of your life. Hell yeah, because they can't let go. You have well, imprinted them because you were well, there you first. Are, you, are, you are literally entrenched in their mind for the rest of their natural life. Right. Can I share a quick experience the last time I actually had a potential experience with a virgin? Go ahead. This back in 1998, 1999, something like that. Uh, I was working two jobs. I was a bouncer, and I worked in a call center as a supervisor. Okay. Uh, this young lady in the call center, you know, we had a mutual attraction. We went out, found out she was still a virgin, like 22, 23 years old. Pretty, pretty woman. Mm-hmm. Very pretty young lady. And when she told me she was a virgin, I began to, you know, Back, she's like, What's wrong? What, what's going on? And I said, You need some experience. You're not ready to deal with somebody like me. Right. Well, at least you were honest. She didn't like that I said that. But it was the truth. It was the truth. And one particular night in the club I worked at, there was a crowd. She, she was like trying to follow me around the club sometimes. And she actually one time happened to, to catch me in the middle of a crowd. And she called herself hit me in the ribs. Okay. <laughs> Mind you, I'm, I'm, at that point, a military veteran and also trained to be a professional wrestler with a few matches under my belt as well. I was waiting for something to happen. <laughs> so, it, so it kind of, it was more amusing than anything else. Right. So when I talked to her, she's like, so I said, so I said, why did you hit me? What if I didn't realize it was you and I would have reacted wrong thinking that it was somebody trying to fight? Well, unfortunately, you were alert enough that that didn't happen. I said, yeah, unfortunately for you. But I said, you really don't have that kind of experience, you know, so I'm looking at about six months because I, I really don't want to be your first. Right. Because where I am mentally and where you are mentally, it's not going to be a good thing. Yeah, that could be that could be a lot of work on you know on both ends because that can affect her trying to mm-hmm. do all of this, and just like it it'll affect you trying to have the patience and being the teacher, and when you have to be, it's, the, it's a combination of patience, teacher that her emotional mindset is not going to be in the right place as well. Well, yeah, because it's kind of fragile. It's really the yeah, beginning. Fine. It's the beginning for her womanhood, seeing as that she mm-hmm. was, you know, a virgin. But like I say, that's, right. that's that experience versus inexperience. And I've had my displeasure. Um, I did the cougar thing at one point in my life, and I didn't really enjoy teaching as much as I thought I would. Because it took away from the experience itself. And I couldn't really get much pleasure out of it. And the fact that the young man was, you know, he, he was inexperienced. So that that kind of became a job. In a sense, it became a something like a job. So that took the fun and the pleasure aspect for me out of it. So... I mean, it's a it's a toss up, and then there are people out there who actually do like that fact because, well, from what I've heard and been told, that with some guys they want a female who's a virgin because she's a clean slate. And I'm going, okay, I can see that as well, but you're not seeing the other side of it. But you will, okay, go, you know, go for it. You will. They want to have that control aspect. Mm-hmm. They want to, um, I guess they want the control aspect. They want to put it on somebody who's totally inexperienced because she don't know no better. Yeah, 
Yeah, so if they fucking you suck in bed. You know, around calling him daddy and all that. Yeah, because if he sucks in bed, she's not going to know the difference. And vice versa. Right. You not know. You're not going to know the difference until something happens when y'all break up. And then the next person going to put it on her three times as good. And she really going to lose her mind. Right. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? You know what? I'm actually laughing because I was asked that. <laughs> even though I was the first to about three women, but uh-huh. also the second to to a few more. You know, sometimes that can be worse in some cases. I learned that the hard way too. <laughs> it can. But see, listeners, this is why this topic is important because there are so many different aspects to that one question. Because, I mean, let's look at it. Now, how many people that we can really and truly ask this question to? And they're going to be completely honest because, well, let's just be honest. Some people are going to lie to either make themselves look good or try to downplay the number to try to look even better. Yeah, because more than half, right, more than half of all adults, single adults, hell, let's include some of everybody because... I mean, everybody is not being faithful. We can't say that. So, more than half of all adults, single or not, Americans have had a one-night stand at least once in their lives. Not even just Americans. You think it's, it's, I know. It's not just Americans. It's what worldwide. As a teenager in Nigeria. Yes, I know you was busting them down. I already know. But we we don't start right here in America for the Americans who like to be a little on the snobbish side and be like, no, I don't do those sort of things. Oh, I'm not that way. We 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 well, going for them. Any, anybody who says they're not that way, <laughs> they're lying their ass off. Basically, because I mean, I think the problem is, and I think the problem is that they don't know the difference between right and wrong. they came what from. Is, what it is, you have, you have a bunch of men, unfortunately, who have the so-called Madonna complex. Oh, and not the Madonna. The patriarchy, where the woman that they view as their wife, mm-hmm. they put her up on a pedestal and there's certain things that they say that they don't want to do with her because she's the wife. Right. But then they'll go get concubines, a.k.a. side pieces to go do these things with, which is not doing with their wife. You better say it. I'm sorry, me personally? Whatever my woman is, I want her to do A through Z with me, so that way there's no need for anybody else. There's no 1A, no 1B, and 1C. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like the general idea, but there's so many people who don't just don't see it that way. Now, I like the concept. I really do, because... It's a certain freedom in that. Sexually, there's a certain freedom in that. Because you don't have to worry about diseases. You don't have to worry about introducing something unnecessary into the body. Because after all, it does affect our health. So you do have to be really careful what you, what microbes and whatnot you let in. Because you can fuck up something and leave with something you didn't, you know, have when you started. So that would be that would be one of the major things. But like you said, because of social expectation, it tends to lead some some men to believe they have to increase their numbers to seem more impressive. Or on the other side, women might feel that they have to decrease their numbers so they're not seen as loose or a whore. But the truth you know what? the truth well, is the truth. To be totally honest, all that shit is bullshit. Because, case in point, many women, you know, go to college. Right. Go to college, you sow your royal oats. Yeah, yeah. Just like when men go to the military. Hell, women do it too. Uh, yeah. Because I know in my 
three years in the army, I think I, yeah, I think I was with more military women than civilian women. If I was to really sit down and actually count it. I heard they were freakier anyway. Hmm? I heard they were freakier anyway. I believe so. I really, but, I really believe it. But continue, you know me. <laughs> yeah, um, I honestly believe that, um, that women in certain stages of their life, just like men, but of course, you know, the whole stigma about women as a number. Right. Um, women go through certain stages, for example. Like I said, one, college. Two, graduating college. Three, graduating high school. If she, and four, like divorces. Shit like that. Yeah. And men do the same thing. When you hit a certain landmark or, or something thing happens, it's like, you know what? Let, let me go get under somebody. Right. But it's, it's the whole stereotypical bullshit. And like I said, personally... I don't care who it is. Say, for example, uh, let's say whoever the fuck my dream woman may be, okay? Okay. Say, say in my life I've had 120 bodies. Okay. And she's had 250. And we sitting down, whether we having a drink or eating a meal or whatever, and somehow the subject comes up, and I say, well, I've had 120. She says, well, dang, okay, just 120, I've had 250. Okay, cool. I would appreciate that honesty. I really would. Right. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's I love that shit right there. Keep that shit real. Well, see, the thing is, people, people are afraid of honesty. That's the problem. They're they're afraid of how they're gonna handle it. That's really what it is. Mm-hmm. That's when why they don't like asking that question. When you are honest with yourself, right. Pretty much. Because I myself, I've had, I've had years where one year I had over 20, when I think it was 23, and I'm the same man who's going to it for two years. Right. So anything is possible. It is. And then the, the thing with the numbers, if you really look at it, it's a subjective thing anyway because, like I said, I've had years where Basically, I tagged just almost any woman who came close to me. Right. And ironically, that was after my annulment, after getting out of Desert Storm. Right. And then, I went celibate for two years because I was full with women. And I was like, you know what? I'm not really sure if, if, if I like them enough to just really want to deal with anybody the way I should. Right. So, I slowly one by one cut them off. Okay. You're strong. So like I was dealing with them all at the same time, but if I had, like, like three of them in a four-month period, I was like, okay, yeah, I need to slow down, and that's basically what happened. Right. I right mean, after Memorial Day 2017 all the way to June 2019. Yeah, because there are some people who do practice celibacy, and you know what? If you're listening to this podcast right now, kudos to you. Do your thing as long as you're happy. Now, on the other hand, if you a slut or a man who are listening to this and you just like fucking, do your thing. Just be safe and just be aware and cautious of what it can do to your body, mentally, physically, and emotionally. We're going to get a little bit more into that in just a minute. But it's one of those things to where as an adult, we have to, like you said, if you're being honest with yourself, that's helpful because you can be honest with somebody else because the only the only way the numbers are going to matter to me is if it matters to that person. Now, if it don't matter to you, it don't matter to me. 
Now, it'll matter to me if it matters to you because you have a problem with the numbers. And so you might need to work that shit out. So that would be what I would have a problem with on the mental aspect of that. But other than that, I would not trip at all. Because, I mean, we do know, given time, space, opportunity, um, what you want to, uh, liquid courage, whatever the case may be, divorce party or, um, bachelorette party, bachelor party, whatever the situation is, a night out on the weekend, anything is bound to happen and you never know what can fall literally in your damn lap. So just keep mm-hmm. it, just keep it 1,000 because, I mean, everybody's got some freak in them, whether they want to admit it or not, whether they hide it or not. And know that there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone else, you're not mistreating kids or anything like that, you're not raping nobody, whether you're male or female, because men do get raped too. As long as it's mm-hmm. nothing like that, I don't see the big issue in it. I really don't. Now, where I have the issue is the lying about it. Because then that puts everyone in the situation in danger. Because if you're going to lie about how many partners you've had, what else are you lying about? Perhaps perhaps you're lying about every time you used protection. You know what I'm saying? So it's like one of those catch-22 almost on that. Now, so we've discussed about how many bodies. Now, how many bodies is not enough? Because there are people out there who would ask that question. So I'm going to uh, ask. You that. know what? How many bodies is not enough? Mm-hmm. You know the old. I have to say three. But then again, that's subjective to age as well. And let me tell you why. Anytime I say something, I have an experience that, 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 <laughs> I, that can back it up. Right. Okay. I'm going to say three. I'm going to say four. Four? Okay, good number. I'm going to say four. The reason why I'm going to say four is because I remember there was a club I worked at called GG's. You know about it. Oh, yes, I do. Fun times. Uh, so Saturday nights they had, you know, growing a sexy crowd art and music. Yeah. And I remember I helped this this lady one night. She had a flat tire. I was getting everybody at the parking lot, helping ladies get to their car. She had a flat tire, and I went until everybody got out, and I changed it. Right. She insisted on buying me breakfast. I didn't want to buy her breakfast. I mean, I didn't, didn't want to go. It's like, I was helping you out. She's like, but you didn't have to do that. I said, yeah, but, you know, since... I'm the main bouncer on duty, and I came out, and I have the physical ability to do it. I did it. I wasn't doing it for no cool points or nothing like that. I was just, you know, just being a nice guy. You're right. A gentleman. Anyway, she insisted. Um, I followed her and her girls up to Denny's. We ate. I think back then I was still eating very clearly, so I think I had a salad and some orange juice. Okay. Anyway, we exchanged numbers. Started to talk or whatever like that. Um, she only had five bodies. All right. She had five bodies, but she was very in tune with her sexuality and her freakiness. Oh, that's a winner. Yes. If she was, if she was in Dallas, that would have been somebody who I probably would have seriously tried to hold on to. Right. I can understand that too, and besides, you want to, you know, make sure you're aware of the situation. So I get it. Right. It's being clean and safe. If you're on the way out there and, and, and we've not carved anything and thrown exclusively, which I don't do long distance relationships in the first place. So right. if, if you're doing something like that, then, you know, I'm like, okay, so you just tell me now. You drove all the way down? Yeah, I drove. Okay, so you couldn't call me when you were driving? Because at this time, we still had cell phones. Right. <laughs> okay. 
just this this is like such an interesting topic and I'm loving this right now because I mean a lot of people still even though we're in you know 2020 we still have people who are afraid to openly speak and talk about sex and sexuality although all the smut because there's a difference although we have a lot of smut on TV and online there's still a lot of people who you know are very reserved very laid back and I want people to know Right. Uh, prudish, should I dare say. Prudish as hell. Yeah, but that's, that doesn't make for a happy life. Now, so, we have the number of bodies. That's too many. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say, you hit, you bet, if you're batting at more than 5,000 bodies, I, I'm not going to be, I'm, I'm not going to be trying to do shit with you. Because you're doing a whole lot of extra. Now, the lowest number I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll take that five. <clears throat> Pardon me, because at least with that five, you don't slept with at least five people, so you have some experience to work with, and it'd be a pleasurable experience, and I don't have to teach. I'll be lazy on that aspect. Right. So. We've gotten through that. So, what is the impact to life as far as how many bodies? What do you see on that? Um, that depends on your mentality. Right. That truly depends on your mentality. Your mentality and your age. Because if you're 21, if you're 21, never left your hometown, With a female, it's, culturally speaking, it's frowned upon because it's an automatic stigmatism of the title of being a hoe. But with guys, it's looked at as he's just more experienced. He can please me. He can please me because he knows what he's doing. a lot of sense um and i'm pretty sure a lot of parents do in fact view it that way because i believe i guess in my family it would probably be the same as well i don't know listeners you guys let me know if you're listening if you're just coming in welcome uh we have been we have been up oh, lost lost agbu okay so that was i guess um richard agbu cultural and society youtuber he was giving his opinions on the topic for this evening. How many bodies is too many or not enough? And we... Okay, I think he is back. On one radio. Are you back? Hey, this, is, this is me again. Okay, good. We got you back. Great. Yeah, um, I accidentally hung up when I was trying to release the other call. I got a good friend of mine bringing me some bags of salad. Somebody was doing a giveaway in her apartment. Oh, that's very said, nice. I know we don't eat this salad. But she don't eat salad the way I do. You know how you sound like a rabbit. Yeah, well, that's healthy. So that's good and very thoughtful. 
Okay, so where we were. Okay. Right, right. As a matter of fact, tell her I said, hey, what's up? Oh, that's great. Okay, so, um, so, what is the impact to life? Now, as I stated earlier, everyone gets something from it, and in a lot of ways, keeps something from each partner, whether it's something physical, intellectual, emotional, psychological, or even social. You get something, whether it's a scar, whether it's a smile, whether it's a new way to dress, the places you go, how you feel about other men or other women, and physically what it actually does to your body. Because some, some women actually get a hold to some horses and it don't, and can't sit right. So, it does, it does matter because there is an impact to life. Yes, I did. Tell her hello and tell her her voice is going to be on the podcast. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, so... This is now there are there's some good sides to sex. There are a lot of benefits of having sex. Yeah. For instance, having an orgasm increases blood flow and release natural pain relieving chemicals. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Um, sexual activity with a partner or through masturbation can provide important psychological and emotional benefits, like exercise. Sex can help, yeah, sex can help reduce stress and anxiety and increase happiness. Sexual activity can provide full or partial relief from migraines and even cluster headaches. It can also be good cardiovascular exercise, which can lead to better sleep. Oh, yes. Good dick will do it. Good dick will do it. Ladies, y'all listening? Good dick will do it. The best sleeping pill in the world. Ain't that right? Yes. Not only that. <laughs> Not only that. It actually makes your immune system stronger. It's also a confidence booster. And for, uh, it's done right, it is. right, had your head so damn big you won't be able to walk out the bedroom door. <laughs> and to the older adults, there's a great advantage as well. Yes, our older adults are still fucking get over it. Yes, that's why they're still here. Right. I'm talking about, I'm trying to fuck till I can't walk no more. Till, I mean, if I'm in a wheelchair, you know what? Help me get out this wheelchair and toot it, help me toot it up. Because I'm trying to right. get it and give it. Because re <laughs> realistically, now, I don't know about the majority of the listeners, but I've had my fair share of porn. Mm-hmm. And even though, yeah, there's a, there's a great majority of it where it's mostly... Younger girls, like 25 and under. Right. I'm sorry, at the age of 50, I feel a, a, a little conflicted about that. Mm-hmm. Give me 35 and up, 40 and up. Right. And actually, I've seen some form of women my age, which for me is a great thing. Right. Because you know, as they say, deal with somebody your own age. I'm with it. I'm, I, I don't have a problem with it. Right. Age, it makes me want to keep myself up, which I'm glad I'm doing. 
Right. And if she's keeping herself up, I'm definitely going to want to keep myself up. Right. It's, it's, it's motivation. You look at your partner or you look at whoever you're looking at on the, uh, the DVD or whatever, you're like, oh, shoot, she's doing the thing. She's right. She's really doing the thing. And, you know, you have to you really, realistically, have no choice but to accept it. <laughs> That's the key. If if there's a brain there, yeah. So you have, you, you have too many people who want to stigmatize shit. Yeah. Now I look at it like this. Um, I really don't think at this point in my life I have too many really terrible stigmas as far as you know looking at a woman sideways. Mm-hmm. Except for if she cheats on me. If she cheats on me, if, she cheat, if we're exclusive and she cheats on me, I'm going to look at her like she ain't shit. Well, and yeah. Like, well, I mean, you're going to lose respect. Once you lose the right. respect, then then that's, you know, right. that's going to happen. That's a natural, you know, emotion right. and so, defense. But anything beyond that, like body counts, not worrying about it. I, if she, um, yeah. Even if she smashed somebody that I've known, with respect, I'm not going to, I'm not going to clown her because sometimes you just never know. Now, I'm not going to be one of those creeps trying to do something behind my friend's back. Right. You got a I'm lot of those know, out there. Uh, look, uh, I don't know why, but there's a weird chemistry, weird connection, and something's going on here. <laughs> right. Let me say, hell, I don't care. Go ahead and do it. You sure? Yes. Okay. Smash. I you, and I know you're sober. Smash. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. It's, Smash. To me, it's about honesty. It's about, you know, it's being honest, being true to yourself and true to your people. Yeah. I mean, that's the utmost respect. That's a person you can trust. Because if you right. can't trust them, you know, what the fuck you going to do with them? I mean, let's just be honest about it. Because, I mean, I would feel the same way. You know, I'm going to yeah. be like, girl, uh... Your man is choosing you. You 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 might want to you know do some do something about that. I don't know what y'all got going on. If this is a right. a mutual thing, can somebody give me some clarity and understanding? Because he's trying to get it, and I don't want to be in the wrong in this situation. So let me know what's going on. Because uh-huh. she might not even know that he's you know, sometimes you know. A situation will pop up where you're getting chose. Yeah. And 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 you're well. How can I put it? Accidentally capitalizing on a situation because it has literally fallen into your lap. Yes. And a lot of times, <laughs> listeners, it is literally falling in your fucking lap. <laughs> oh, literally. Because um, I, I had a nickname for myself at one point in my life, and I think it's still there to a certain extent, Mister Oblivious. Oh damn, ladies, did you hear that? Richard, can you say that one more time for the ladies? I said I, I had a nickname for myself at one point in my life, and it was Mr. Oblivious, meaning that there were times in my life where a woman showed interest in me. I didn't really show interest in her, or I was just being just a just a nice guy in general. Turned mm-hmm. out she was digging me more than I expected, and yeah. then boom. And it's like, uh, wait a minute, what? You know, sometimes that sometimes that that can lead to the best sex right there because you're not hounding oh, for yes, women. Yes. When you're not hounding for women or a woman who's not searching for men and it kind of falls in your lap like that, it is more pleasurable. It really is. Because this really is a connection there. It's the chemistry is a little hot there. So it uh-huh. does make for a better, you know... Sexercise session. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a shit. I say do it, damn it, do it, do it, and do it some more. Especially oh, right cool. now, because I'm sorry, but we on lockdown. Everybody's frustrated. Girl gonna get that pussy up. Dude gonna get that dick up. And that'll come out, cut out some of that attitude, too. It'll, it'll, you know, it, it can totally change your attitude. That's one of the other benefits. You know, it's a mood adjuster. I mean, like I said before now, 
As we all know, with everything, there must be moderation to exclude damage to the body. You know the saying, too much of a good thing can be bad. Yeah. I mean, because be honest about it, we're not going to live forever. So the body we have is the only one we get. No do-overs. That's true. Wear and tear on the body will happen, but doing too much can leave you with irreversible damage. That's what we don't want. Because that's the danger zone right there when it comes to the body count. If you just out there, I mean, ladies, if you out there and you letting Chad, Tyrone, Pookie Nim, and all the whole crew just do whatever they want to do to you, whenever they want to do it to you, that pussy ain't going to snap back like that like it should. That elasticity you know goes yeah. away. Kegel exercises, of course. Yeah. But how many how many females actually really and truly know this? Well, I would hope a lot of them because, well, see, I know when I was younger, depending on who the actual woman was, you know, right. you know, I might say, hey, squeeze it. Huh? Squeeze it. What do you mean squeeze down on me? Oh, yeah, use that muscle to squeeze. I would tell them. But see, that, that's what I'm talking about. There's still a lot of women who do not know about Kegel exercises. That's where the experience comes in from. Yes, because you know, you you, you know what it is. Teach you a couple things. Yeah, you just don't want to be that damn teacher, and I can't blame you. <laughs> they like to be with, you know, one woman. And I can understand that because, I mean, now please, now they're, please understand. they're not comfortable for everybody. I get that. Now, that when I say that, if she get pregnant, I'm going to be a dad, period, point blank. Right. I, I know the consequences. I've always been a kind of know the consequences kind of, of man. Right. That, that could possibly be because my father had a bunch of kids. and you know the society and or let, let's say the environment in which you reside and grew up in the environment plays a huge part in how you feel about sex and sexuality because it's what you know because it's what you see it's what you've heard you've only seen mama with Tyrone and them type of dudes or seen daddy with Keisha and Peaches and them type of females and didn't exactly see anything different, so you think that is the end-all and be-all, but it's not. Right. There's way more to sex and sexuality than a lot of people realize. And just like this topic, like I say, 
each partner, you're going to, I mean, you're going to be left with something. Casual sex relationships may, however, present a risk factor in and of itself. These relationships may be particularly likely to be impersonal, lacking in the potential to provide emotional fulfillment, as well as everything else that goes with that. Sex with the new male partner, for a lot of females, introduces new bacteria, often resulting in a change of the vaginal pH balance, which is just, you know, another reason why you have to be careful and the reason why numbers can matter. Yeah. Because they leave something. And oftentimes, it's not always wrapped up. So, it's getting mixed. And some DNAs don't mix. That's just what that is. That's true. Some don't. Yeah. That's why back in the day, before a lot of people got married, they used to get tested. They used to get their blood drawn and tested before they got married to make sure that, one, they weren't related, but, two, that their different DNAs could come together and, you know, match and coincide with one another. Well, that's not a requirement anymore. There's a lot of requirements. No. No, it's not required anymore. So you don't have to do that anymore. But it does play a big part as far as body count, what's too much, what's not enough. So it really does matter. And don't Listeners, please, don't worry about what social expectations are. It is up to each individual person. It's their right to do what they want, when they want, and how they want it, as long as they're not hurting anyone. Mm-hmm. Social expectations, in my opinion, are a bunch of bullshit anyway, if you think about it. Because realistically, and I'm just, I'm just being honest here, for every person who has a quote unquote bullshit um, social hang up or qualm, mm-hmm. they're actually surfing on two more uh, corner adult websites than you realize. Hmm. Oh, and also, I'm going to say this as long as you're not fucking animals and shit like that, Thank you. I'm, I'm good. Now, when you get to doing all of that type bullshit, I, I can't fuck that. You ain't finna kill me. Because yeah, you, you want to go fuck animals and catch them. Right. See, when it comes to stuff like that, I mean, you gotta have everything. There's a limit. Just because you can do something does not mean that you always should. Right. Everything in moderation. That's really what it's about. So you can protect yourself. Love yourself, because that's the best way to love yourself. That way you'll know how to protect and love somebody else. And for God's sakes, if y'all ain't fucking, get the fucking. Get some of the stress up off you. You know, cook each other some something and sit back and laugh and joke together. I know we're still quarantined and everything, but life does not have to be a drag right now. It really doesn't. I mean, you can still live. That's a part of coping. And to be honest about it, I mean, I ran through all the benefits of sex. So, I don't know, Rich, we might be uh, helped in creating the mood for some babies to be born after this silver witch. Hey, you know what? I look at it like this. If so, cool. I'm cool with it. Right. Because I'm not going to lie. But by all means, people, sex does not have to be a bad thing. It doesn't have to be something that's hidden or only done at night or, you know what I'm saying? It can be with whatever flavor of person you like. Mm -hmm. It's all personal choice and what they want. So fuck the social expectations. Do you be happy, be safe and have fun. So it'll the world will be a happier damn place. I mean, what do you think? It really would be. It really, it really honestly would be. Yeah, it'd be more patient people. It'd be more 
level-headed people because everybody would be thinking about the pussy or the dick that they got. So when somebody cut them off, they're going to be like, you know what, forget you, but I'm going to hurry up and get back to my dick or my pussy because you're not going to fuck that up for me. I mean, I know I've had times driving on the way to go pick up a girlfriend or whatever like that. And then somebody's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to let you make it because you did not hit me. You did not cause me to hit you or anybody else. Right. Take a deep breath, turn the music up a little bit louder. And then when the internal meter comes back down, turn the music back down, keep going to where I'm going. Right. I mean, it's a stress reliever. Uh -huh. I mean, it keeps anxiety low. Shit. So I I see plenty of benefit as long as as long as people are you know respectful to others and ain't hurt nobody. Shit. Fuck on. <laughs> Literally, have at it. So hopefully, my listeners have not went to wash their ears out. Because <laughs> well, your listeners, they should have. I know, right? But any new listeners, because, I mean, like I say, this is raw, uncut truth. This is what my podcast station is based and built on. It is the freedom of speech. And we all have that right. So anytime you guys want to call in, you have a question or anything, the number to call is 318-315-3971. Again, that number is 318-315-3971. And also, you guys can email if you have any questions, show ideas, or you just want to have a conversation. You can email me at ononeradiotalk at gmail.com. Follow me on all the social media sites. And while you're at it, go over on Facebook and check out On One Radio there. And you can even find Richard Ogbu over in the On One's Day One's private Facebook group. Yes, he's in there. And we be in there talking about some shit, too, on the day-to-day -day basis. So if you want to catch up with him or you want to catch up with me, you can find us there. Um, if you want to connect with Richard Ogbu, Rich, tell them how they can connect with you, hon. Best way to connect with me right now is through Facebook. And that's Richard R I C H A R D O O G B U. Yes. If, if there are any African listeners out there, if they're confused about the pronunciation, O B U O G B U O B U, and they're like, Ah, Richard, we know how to reach you now. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. And. Agbu also has a YouTube channel, so definitely go check that out as well. Show your love, show your support. He has some very interesting videos over there. Yes, most definitely. And as usual, Richard, it has been a pleasure. Do you have any parting words for the listeners concerning this topic? Whatever it is you choose to do, it is your choice. Not anybody else's choice. Right. Because you want to do it. That's what's Not up. Do it for any other reason but yourself. So that way you can't go blame nobody if this shit don't turn out right. <laughs> right. And own it. Own it. So guys. It has been a blast. I have enjoyed having you here. Know that you can always come back. Look, guys, know that you are loved, cherished, needed, and somebody out there looks up to you. And whether you know it or not, you inspire somebody. So keep the positive vibes and much love. Thanks, Rich. I'm going to call you in a little, a little bit, all right? Okay, cool. All right, later. You are listening to On Thank you for taking the time to listen to my talk show. 
I wish you the best and don't allow anyone to fuck up your vibe. I have been your host, Tony Williams.